How's it going guys? We are back with another video, another lineup prediction ahead of the game against Everton. Oh, it's a big one. Uh, but before we do get into this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. So playing against Everton is not going to be easy. We are going to need to have a balance of experience, pace, passion and strength. Something that we've lacked a lot of in a lot of departments over the last few weeks. In fact, the whole of 2023. But this lineup, I think, would do it. I think it's got a good balance. So without further ado, let's get into it with the goalkeeper. So in goal, there's only one man for the job. I know he didn't have the best game weeks last week, but without him, it could have been a cricket score. Uh, and I'm going with Alison Becker, obviously. Uh, he was very good. Um, well, not very good last week. He's good last week, but he's always very good in my eyes. I think he's amazing. So, you know, one man for the job. Alison Becker in there. There's no question really about it. I love Keller, but when your keeper is as good as Alison is, it is hard to be a second choice keeper. But I love you, Kelleher. Please stay for cup games. Now, on the topic of passion, the right back has to be Trent Alexander-Arnold. I mean, he is a scouser. In the Merseyside derby, you need it. He is 100% the one choice that I've got for my right back. Not to mention, he actually does play quite well against Everton on repeat occasions. Now, it's not going to be an easy game set up against Daichi 11. But I do believe that Trent Alexander-Arnold could be the key this week to breaking them down. I really do. Joel Matip may not have had the best game week last week, but he was being dragged down by Joe Gomez, and I firmly believe that. I know he scored the young goal, but Joe Gomez, I put up full for each of the blooming goals in that game, and I still back Matip. You know, I do think Canate is better, and I do think Van Dijk is better, obviously. But Matip is the solid number three for me. Like, if one of them's out, Matip has to come straight in. Every single time. And the other centre-back option is Nat Phillips again. Last week I said Nat Phillips. This week I'm saying Nat Phillips. If you didn't have to have any more evidence, Klopp, look at Joe Gomez. He's useless. Um, I mean, realistically, come on. How many times is Joe Gomez going to have to mess up for it to be Nat Phillips? I actually think Nat Phillips is solid. And when I was talking about strength and passion earlier, that's him. That is what he is. He is strong, he is passionate, he is like a regen of James Carragher. Andy Robertson is <laughs> the clearest choice in left back. I love Smickers. I think he's great. You know, he's an ugly scouser, but um don't know what that accent was. <laughs> but yeah, I love Simicas, but come on, Andy Robertson is just a quality above. Best left back in the world, in my opinion. Deal with it. Drop your hate comments, non-Liverpool fans. Liverpool fans, come back me up, support me. You know what it's like. But uh yeah, to me, Andy Robertson, best left back in the world. And he's solid. Let's, let's just have it from your Abney. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned it yet, but Stefan Bajetic is amazing. He's my favourite player in centre midfield this season. I think he's been our best player. Um, we are going to be playing a 4-4-2 again, and he is that staple in position. In my eyes, we're playing a 4-4-2. don't know what Jürgen Klopp's going to do, but that's what we should be doing. Um, and yeah, Bajetic is number one choice for that position. He has to be. I mean, look at him. He is the best midfielder we've had all season. So... Easy choice, really. It speaks for itself now. James Milner is the second choice centre mid. He's the one putting in now. I talked about passion earlier, and leadership is going to be needed as well. And that is what we need in this game, because it's a Merseyside derby. And someone like that next to Pichetti, I don't think Milner will play. Well, there's no way he can't play the full 90. But, you know, start Milner. Don't start Thiago, little pussy, little kicking rubbish, tr rubbish, you know. And uh, don't start Ox, because, you know, I backed him earlier in the week, but realistically, it was in right wing, we're going for Mohamed Salah. Again, I mean, he's got a lot of goals in Merseyside derbies. He's been really good for us in them. And, you know, I've got to back him still. I will always back you, Salah. I'll, well, um, for right now, I'll back you until we've got fit players. But come on, man. He can't keep having stinkers in a row. I feel like this could be his week to get at least one goal. Um, you know, and he could get him in a bit of form again. Confidence is gone. This is your time, Salah. Harvey Elliott has been one of our standout performers in this year. I mean, we've had a terrible year and we haven't had many standout performers, but Harvey Elliott's been one of them. And if he doesn't start this game, I'll put him in left mid. He could play right mid even. But if he doesn't start this game, it's going to be a joke because what he is just one of our best players. Listen to me, please, Jürgen. Play Harvey Elliott because he has been class. He can do stuff with the ball. He links up little plays. He runs. He has pace and he has passion. That is what we need. Last week, Cody Gakpo improved massively. From other weeks' performances, I'd say it was a 100% improvement over the last two weeks, maybe, or last two game weeks, you know. 
he started to pick ball up, started to have a run at them. And it's good. It's good to see. I know he was on the left. That was a 4-3-3. Three, three. I would still play him in this centre-forward role just before up behind uh, the striker. And that is where we're going with him again. Because if he gets that ball with little intricate passes, he won't be 007 anymore. He will be scoring and assisting, hopefully. Darwin Nunes may have missed a big chance, but... He still made the chance. He, he got in behind, headed it down, and whacked it straight at the keeper. He hit the target, and that is something that matters. But next time he's got to score. He's got to do better, I can't lie. But he is still my choice for striker, because what else are we going to do, really? But he, I love him. I love Nunes. And, you know, if he starts to get some goals in a row, then he'll be flying. I'm just living forward to next season, to be honest. But this season, come on, darling, get some goals under your belt. And that's going to do it, guys. I mean... I could say with the front four that I lined up, any of them could sort of rotate. You could put Gakpo on the left, Elliot on the right, and Salah up behind Nunes. Or put Gakpo right up top, Salah behind him, Nunes on the left, Elliot on the right. Anything, anything could happen. I wouldn't play Elliot down the middle. But then again, maybe why not? At least he's going to run and give it a go. And he's actually put the ball in the back of the net. I think he's our top goal scorer this year. But yeah, anyways, that is going to do it. If you have enjoyed, please leave a like down below. Subscribe! If you made it this far, there's no reason you shouldn't be subscribed because you've obviously enjoyed my content. So hit that button and, uh, you know, then you'll see when I'm next on uh, your camera and your screen. Until then, peace!